Aloha and welcome to my live feed. My name is Master Paul and I'm just getting set up here. I got to double check to make sure everything is working well. So give me just a moment to refresh my computer, make sure it's coming on live, make sure I can hear myself. My computer. Okay, sure. sounds like everything is working. That's always good. So welcome to my office. You see behind me, this is uh, one of my favorite paintings. It's one of my Buddha paintings. And um, I should say the only Buddha painting I have. And uh, it's about the size of my entire wall, six foot by eight foot. I had it commissioned um, about 10 years ago, back when I was making a little more money. And it was right after I had um, went through a workshop with an enlightened master. It was a female master. I was one of eight people in this three-day event with her. And um, she took me on what's called a, she referred to it as a uh, soul travel. Now I had heard soul travel before, but I had no idea what that actually meant. And so when I uh, went on this soul travel, then I had an image. I had, this was like a, a 10 minute in an open room with eight other people with my eyes closed and somehow this master changed the frequency in the room and I was actually able to go on this soul travel with this master. Um, I shouldn't say with her, she did actually show up in there. But uh, during that journey, this, this uh, wall tapestry behind me or representations of it showed up in my in my imagery. I saw um, Guan Yin Buddha there. I saw uh, quite a few monks walking around that had not... Um, I had no understanding of who they were and when they walked by they would talk to me but their mouths didn't open. They talked to me but um, they, they talked to me with their mind and um, the whole area was golden like the canvas behind me that's why it has so much gold in it because uh, the mountains were radiating this gold color and um, when I woke up I was at the base of a koi pond when I say I woke up in this in this uh, soul travel vision and that's why if you saw the whole painting you would see a koi pond at the base and, and Guan Yin was in this vision as well. And Guan Yin gave me a, uh, a gift. She gave me a little pearl. Now, at this time in my soul journey, I was not sure who Guan Yin was. Uh, I was not sure much about Buddha or Buddhism or any uh, thing of that nature. I'd studied some, but I didn't really know much about her. But she showed up in this vision, and, um, and she ended up handing me this, this gift was quite surprised and it was a little iridescent pearl and she she had several arms and she reached out with one of them and in her palm was this iridescent pearl I'm gonna turn the camera maybe you can see um, her over here in that part of the canvas you can see her on the end there and uh, maybe one of these days I'll do a live stream with um, with her in the image <clears throat> but um, it's truly an amazing uh, uh, vision that I received when I <clears throat> um, was in this 10-minute soul journey, this soul travel. Uh, it was the first experience of an enlightened master. It was my first experience on a soul travel. It was my first experience of any kind. And it stuck with me for well over a year. And um, I was looking for an artist to paint what was in my head, what I knew this vision was, because it was so surreal, I had never in my entire life experienced anything like it. And eventually I came across a, a very talented artist, and he, uh, he put on paper, and then we put it on this canvas. Uh, he even created a 12-foot uh, a frame for it. I told him I want to be able to travel with me wherever I go. So when you see the Buddha behind me, uh, and you see the happy Buddha next to me in Guan Yin, that's where this came from. I hope someday that this will end up in one of Master Shah's Tao healing centers. That's my goal. So uh, we just need a big enough center for it because it's quite big. 
So I see that Cat Cat has joined. Welcome, Cat. Uh, Monica, welcome. And then Robin, welcome. Master Robin, excuse me. So happy that all of you have joined. Um, I'm learning how Facebook live stream works. This is my third event. I'm kind of uh, just carrying on right now because what happens with Facebook is even though I send out invitations, some people get it, some people don't get it in time. You have to actually go to my Facebook page and or see something pop up on the timeline, which is very rampant. You know, I never know whose timeline this is going to pop up on. So uh, if it follows the last few days, uh, there should be about 10 to 15 people today. So I don't want to go too deep into what I wish to share today uh, right off the bat until a few more people join. I'm so grateful that all of you have joined. And I will ask, though, throughout the show for you to share any of your thoughts, visions, insights, your questions. Uh, I will be doing soul readings, and possibly for one lucky soul on this show, I will be doing a, um, a healing blessing. Uh, yesterday, I was, uh, like I said, I'm learning how this works. I was quite surprised. I had two people that I hadn't talked to in person in well over a couple of years their Facebook friends but hadn't really chatted with them too much I see some of their feeds sometimes and uh, Shelly showed up and uh, and my friend Adrian from California days showed up and uh, so I got to acknowledge their showing up I got to say hello and then I, I did a calling for several whoever was on the line to ask for soul guidance and for um, uh, and then I, depending on what was happening, I was going to do a healing blessing as well, depending on what showed up. And um, uh, with Shelly, and you can watch these videos, by the way, they are recorded. If you go to my timeline uh, under my name, you'll see the, the older recordings. Uh, and so Shelly, she's an acupuncturist out in Washington, D.C. And so she had a variety of things, you know, relationship, business, uh, but she isolated down to business. So I did a soul reading for her. And it was quite interesting. Um, the soul of her business came through. One of the foundational teachings of Dr. and Master Shah is that everything has a soul. Uh, those that are watching right now, these uh, four souls that are watching right now, most of you know that. Um, but my hope is that this video will be shared and seen by many, many, many. So I speak to those souls that might not know too much about Dr. Master Shah, might not know too much about the services that are offered by all of his worldwide representatives and all of his students. So one of his base teachings is that everyone and everything has a soul. Now, when I first heard that, I thought that was wonderful. I said, wow, I, I like that. Uh, but I could see that it, 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 it made everyone start to question, what do you mean everything? I mean... I know humans have a soul and probably animals have a soul, but maybe plants have a soul, I don't know, but that's about it. You're saying everything has a soul? And this is a very foundational teaching that Dr. and Master Shah has. And the answer is yes. And then he explains the reason why it's very simple, that the divine, the creator, is all things. And we come from all things. We come from source. We are all things. And therefore, all things are made of Creator. Therefore, everything has a spark of the divine in it. And another way of saying that is everything has a soul or a spark of the divine in it. It's also an, a, a major um, base understanding of how and why anything that we do with soul and soul-related healings, blessings, communications works. So back to Shelley. She asked a question related to her business. Now, when I do a soul reading, uh, that is connecting with heaven. Heaven has a record of everyone's lifetimes. And in that record, it's a record of all the uh, pleasant and unpleasant services. And so I accessed um, that information. Uh, in, this, in this case, I didn't. It was not necessary. What I did was I called the souls of all of those involved and in this case, I asked the soul of her business to be present. I asked the soul of the highest and best outcome. Now, that's an intangible, isn't it? I don't know of many of the, many of the soul readers that go outside of the box. They think of physical souls. But I, I understand that everything has a soul. Thoughts have a soul. Before something becomes physical, it was a thought. Therefore, it has a soul. Possibilities are also thoughts. Possibilities have a soul. Solutions 
have a soul. The solutions are out there for everything. If we tune in, we can grab that solution. Heaven has the answer for us for virtually everything we ask. But we have to connect to that solution, the soul of that solution. So when I do a soul reading, I, I invoke all of the souls, the possibilities, the, uh, the souls of all those involved that have brought about the suffering that that person is experiencing, the souls of, of, of uh, all those in the future that could benefit from uh, ABC business, etc., etc. And this is a very high level and foundational understanding teacher, uh, teaching that Dr. and Master Shah has brought to humanity. In August 8, 2003, it was announced that, that at that exact moment, there was a shift in the timeline uh, into what's called the Soul Light Era, meaning that the previous era of 15,000 years had come to an end. And moving into the soul light era means we're moving towards and back to the divine's heart. We're moving back to original creation. So the soul light era is, a, is literally about reconnecting to that which we have always been. We have always been soul, but we are so far from it because we get caught up in this world. We get caught up in the... Um, we get caught up in all of the, the um, blockages of this world. So, the soul and the soul light era is what we need to stay connected to to ensure that we are in alignment with our soul's intention. What do I mean by that? Why do you think we're here? What is the purpose of life? The purpose of life, according to my teacher, my spiritual father, is, my, is uh, to serve. And when I read that for the very first time, then it really touched my heart. It opened my heart dramatically. I've got somebody uh, asking me a question on, about this feed, so give me just 20 seconds to respond to them. I'm going to tell her it's live now. Go to my Facebook page. Okay, thank you for that. Live streaming, it's a new experience for me too. Um, so, soul is everything. Dr. Master Shah said that the purpose of life is to serve. So, most of us are far too caught up in work, job, husband, wife, kids, family, feeding them, trying to get that half hour comedy show in that's my favorite, um, going to the kids' ball game, you name it, the, uh, uh, we're, you know, we turn on any radio, we turn on any TV, 90% of the time it's unpleasant information, this person died, that terrorist attack. All of this separates us from soul. All of this separates us from origination. All of this separates us from source. How do we return? That's why the soul light era is here. That's how the soul light era works. It works by reconnecting us to soul. And the start of that is by understanding that everyone and everything has a soul. Everyone we know has a soul, but so does everything. If we know that everything has a soul, that means that we can connect to that soul. That means that we can communicate with that soul. We think communication stops with humans, maybe animals at best. Just a little side note, there is a book called The Secret Life of Plants. Relatively boring, uh, but very interesting with its information when you get past the scientific nomenclature. It was written, I want to say 1920s, and The Secret Life of Plants. Just find it in the library and browse through it, take an hour and, and you'll, just, you'll be amazed. And what they were figuring out back then was that plants had emotions. Plants talked, plants felt. Matter of fact, plants felt you, your, their master, 2,000 miles away. They were able to document that. They had lie detector graphs that they would clip onto the plant leaves. And the plant reacted when, when there was loud noise in the room. The plant reacted when there was yelling in the room, but not when there was nice, soft Mozart music. It actually reacted very nicely, gently. But when there was something that was violent, it reacted. And one of the people that was doing the test was away, a long way away in New York. And when he came back, uh, he looked at the graph of the last uh, week or two, and at the exact time 
he had uh, um, an unpleasant condition occurred to him. It was some kind of an accident um, on, <clears throat> on his, um, where he was at. That exact moment, the plant registered it. How amazing is that? So this will open up a whole new set of possibilities when we reconnect to soul. How do we do that? We talk to the soul. One of the foundational teachings that Master Shah teaches is to say hello. Now, it also comes with a base understanding that yes, it is actually very, very simple. When we connect to the soul, we have the opportunity to transform the blockages that are present. For example, we have pain. Now, our knee, our back, our shoulder, our neck could have pain. We could have relationship pain. Does the relationship have a soul? What do you think? For those that are watching, you're probably going to nod your head. Yes, I believe a relationship has a soul. <clears throat> what else has a soul? Another thing that has a soul is... Let's send this. Another thing that has a soul is um, our neck, our knee, our um, job, our boss, of course. The relationship between me and my boss has a soul. And we can say hello to that relationship between me and my boss, especially when he's not being pleasant towards me. And he, I need to get the time off so I can go to this special retreat, or I need to get that raise because I have new responsibilities and a higher mortgage. One of the great teachings is to be able to connect to the soul of the boss. Another example, you have a, a fight with your spouse. Well, most of us have a spouse. My spouse is, um, when, when we have any time between us that's not pleasant, instead of communicating or arguing, she goes into silence. That puts me in a very weak position. What can I do, right? Some of us, we like to go and, and make sure we, we're at the head of the contest. He who yells the loudest wins. The physical communication when people are hurting rarely works. Go to the room. Dear the soul of my spouse, I love you. Please come. The soul comes in front of you. You communicate heart to heart to that soul. I deeply apologize. I sincerely apologize. I know you have a perspective that I'm having difficulty understanding. And of course, the opposite is true. But I do want you to know that I'm always interested in the best outcome for both of us. I'm very, very sorry that I said this, this, and that. I know that hurts your feelings. That was not my intention. My intention was to have you to know that when you said this, I felt this, da 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 You have this conversation with the soul as if the person was there. The best part about a soul conversation, the best part about a soul conversation, there's no arguing. There's no one that can rebuke what you're saying. Now, there's a few rules with a soul conversation. You can't be selfish about it. It has to be win-win. It has to be where I take responsibility, let us work together for love, peace, and harmony. But when you come at it from a heart-to-heart, -heart, positive intention, where both sides benefit, a soul conference is exceedingly valuable. A soul communication is exceedingly valuable. This applies to everything. So in the case of, um, of a spouse, do this next time. You would be very surprised at the benefits. At the end of your communication, send love. If you have a healing transmission that Master Shah has offered or any of his books, pick it up. Ask his soul to serve. Chant love, peace, and harmony. Or chant the simple words, God's love. Silently, five minutes. Out loud, five minutes. Doesn't matter. Do something that raises the frequency. Uh, bring something to the, to the soul conference that raises the frequency and shifts the um, energetics that are there at the moment. And love does that. Any form of love will do that. Send that soul that love. Why does this work? Very simple. Very simple. This is very important knowledge. This applies to everything. It applies if you use this for conversation to a boss that's not a pleasant person. It applies when you want to get a raise. It applies when you want to um, communicate with that brother-in-law 
or that sister-in-law or that mother and father-in-law that just refuses to accept you or judges you. It works for everything. Here's why. We are impacted in life by karma conditions, by circumstances uh, uh, related to us knowing me. In other words, your brother's husband, we know that they know us. Not only from this lifetime, from multiple lifetimes. We have karma. If there's arguments, there's karma. We have an argument with us, there's some karma. There could be a huge karma. Don't know. The souls are not the personality. The souls are up now. The souls are in that time. The personality is the representation here on Earth. It's doing the bidding of the soul. It's serving its journey to new things. It's trying to remove some karma. It's trying to do good things and improve this humanity. It's trying to return back. That's what we're doing here. At the soul level, unpleasant bosses, soldiers, they want to do things. The spouse in you, if you're in a big argument, the word, the D word, the divorce word comes up, something like that. The souls don't want you to divorce. They don't want you to argue. If you're going to divorce, they want it to be amicable and loving. They don't want hatred, resentment. The souls don't want that. The personalities, they just bicker at each other. The souls, on the other hand, they want you to figure it out. So when you do a soul conference and you're bypassing the personality, you have a far superior set of results. You talk to the soul. You tell it what you desire and how everything can be win-win. You ask for forgiveness. You offer forgiveness. You do this from your heart with a win-win intention. The soul goes back, whispers in the personality's ear, starts changing its thinking. You know, your husband truly does have the best interest in mind. You know, your husband, da-da-da-da-da-da. And her heart is lightened. His heart is lightened. The boss's heart changes. You, you might have to do it more than once, okay? You might have to ask for forgiveness more than once. But time has proven that this is the single most effective way to transform any form of communication blockage. I went through a very unpleasant relationship, and that's putting it mildly. Most of us have at one point in time went through an unpleasant relationship. But that particular relationship was filled with just a, a, a university of wisdom. And one of those was <clears throat> going to a, a, a form of communication style, and I hope you write this down. It's called nonviolent communication. Nonviolent communication. And nonviolent communication it was developed by a man who was hired by presidents back in Jimmy Carter days, and he would send them to these warring nations, Africa, places like that, um, where he taught them a language that allowed them to listen and hear each other and validate each other and be compassionate towards each other. And he was able to, to bring wars down from massive escalations down to handshake, using experience, really. He brought that to the human level and then created CDs, tapes, things like that. I went to his classes. I am very good at communication, but does it matter? Now that I've learned Master Shah's wisdoms, it doesn't matter how good we are verbally, it doesn't matter how emotionally correct we are, how much we validate somebody else's feelings. If there is karma in that relationship, no amount of verbal, emotional, mental prowess with the human communication language is going to help. I had to learn that one. Karma is the reason we have problems. So the best way to deal with it is on the level of soul. The best way to deal with it is by soul communication, soul conferencing. It is one of the most powerful tools that I have used with Master Shah. Now this same soul communication works with everything. Works with your body parts, it works with your finances. It works with relationships, as we just discussed. It works with business partners. It works with attracting new business. It has no limitations. Why? Because everything has a soul. 
And every soul wants positivity. It wants connectivity. It wants love. Every soul wants these because the purpose of life is to serve. And when we connect, we move closer to love, the souls are serving each other. When we serve each other, become closer to love, our connectedness serves those souls around us. Everything is one. So each form of soul communication, even if it's just reconnecting to the soul of our knee that has been causing us pain for the past 12 years, the soul of our back, the soul of that very unpleasant relationship 10 years ago that you just can't seem to get out of your mind, all of those healings that can occur by the soul-to-soul -soul communication can be dramatically and positively impacted in a very powerful way. So I encourage you to learn more about this. You can go to Dr. Master Shah's website, which is drsha.com. You can go to find any of his books in the libraries or in uh, Amazon.com. And of course, you can ask me or any of Master Shah's worldwide representatives or healers about uh, this modality. It goes into much greater detail. Now, <clears throat> today's live event is a little uh, shy on viewers, and so I'm going to ask you to please be interactive. I'm here to serve you. The purpose of this live stream is to gather visibility and um, get people involved. Uh, I want people to feel like this is serving them. I don't want to simply be a mouthpiece talking at you. I want to be serving you with you. So this is a live chat, if you will. You can ask any question you'd like. I'm happy to communicate with you Master Shah's wisdom and teaching around it, as well as any uh, uh, soul communication. We can ask the um, heaven uh, and or any of the souls that can best provide an answer for you to help get some guidance. Okay, let me do one thing here on Facebook. Okay, so please answer any questions you have. Thank you, Monica, for the comment of greatest gratitude. <clears throat> Sometimes the same wisdom through a different mouth, through a different form of communication, all of a sudden we get that aha moment. Master Shah repeats things a lot, and he often repeats it in the same verbiage. I'm learning to speak in that verbiage, so I apologize if I don't always get it exactly on. <clears throat> but sometimes it's good to hear that same thing in a different way. It helps us to have a greater um, gratitude for it. So, what I'd like to do is do a little chanting to serve you. Now, I have been blessed to receive many, many treasures, many, many transmissions and downloads, including uh, very high, high-level uh, transmissions that are associated with song. Everything carries a frequency. And there are healing frequencies and there are frequencies that can harm us as well, such as cell phone frequencies if they're too close to certain body parts or kept on too long next to sensitive tissues, obviously those unpleasant frequencies can hurt us. Well, there are good frequencies. Having received healing transmissions from Dr. Master Shah, they carry the Divine's love, Divine's forgiveness, compassion, and light. And these can transform all blockages. So make a request for those that are watching this on recording. It works for you as well. I have done live blessings before when it didn't even show up onto the television station until 30 days later. And then about three months later, I'm talking to a person that said, the reason I'm here is because I saw your show on television and you asked me to make a request and that three minute blessing, my foot pain went away. How is that possible? It's possible because it's a divine healing. It's not a Paul healing. It's a divine healing through my spiritual teacher and Father Master Shah, through the transmission that I use. And divine does not operate with time and space. Divine is everywhere at all times. So when that person is watching that show live at that moment, the divine blessing is present live at that moment. <clears throat> so for those watching this at a later time, make your request.
Okay, I will now offer the blessing. I encourage you to keep your eyes closed, to focus in your lower abdomen, or if it's a pain area, focus on that area of pain. Visualize golden light. If it is an emotion or a mental blockage, focus in your heart center, in the very center of your chest. Again, visualizing golden light. Have a smile on your face. Soul healing begin. <coughs> Thank you, thank you. Oh. So I invite you to share <clears throat> whatever experience you may have had from that. Peace, calmness, warmth, tingling, any third eye visions, nothing. No attachments on my behalf. It's actually good for other people when they see the posts because it took me, I, I, I trained for many, many years before I could even feel physical energy in the body. It took many years before I could actually feel physical energy in the body. And, you know, I felt that I was a very spiritual person. So every one of us has different levels of awarenesses. So please uh, comment if you did notice anything. <clears throat> I see that uh, Christine has asked a question that she would like a soul reading on. I'm honored to offer uh, guidance at this time for you, Christine. So what I will do is I will connect to the, um, the soul of her son is listed here. I will ask the records in heaven, the Akashic records, to reveal this connection and any guidance, wisdom, and insights that can best assist Kristen with her relationship with her son. <clears throat> Give me a moment, please. Did the soul of Christine Rojas, Christine's Heaven's Teams, Guides, Angels, Saints, did the soul of her son, Percival Rojas, the soul of their relationship from this in all lifetimes, could you please be present? Did the soul of the highest and best, most pertinent wisdom and information that can be important for Christine at this time, Kristen at this time, to hear in relationship to her relationship to her son? Any of the highest, best wisdom, guidance, and information that can help and bring healing to the relationship between her and her son. Could you please be present? I am so honored and grateful for any guidance that you have to offer. I thank Yamonye to opening the Akashic Records at this time. And as appropriate, if needed, please offer any information for our beloved Kristen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Usually I do a moment or two of chanting to clear the channels and then I'll start speaking, so please bear with me. Hey, 
How? This is the soul of the relationship between Kristen and her son. This relationship is one of the most beautiful. It is fraught with deep layers of love. With that comes peaks of emotion in both directions. It would seem almost heartbreaking sometimes with the emotions that can occur with the depth of love that is in this relationship. These two have been both child and parent to each other 23 times. They have been in other forms of romantic love more times than in parent-child. Each time these souls choose to reconnect, the main purpose they have chosen to do so is to move higher to heaven, to find greater and deeper layers of love. I tell you this as a soul of your relationship so that you are aware of the depth that you two operate at. Simply call upon those depths should you find yourself in a place where there is argument, resistance. Ask the soul of those times that you too have experienced the greatest depths of love to return. Ask that soul to clear those blockages should they be there. This beautiful child of yours has a great promise in this life. He carries with him tremendous wisdom from high levels of the divine. And this wisdom will touch many, many hearts. Continue to nurture his heart opening. Continue to honor whatever he brings to the table. It is difficult, I am sure, with the various emotions that are displayed. But do know that each time anything that is viewed by others as unpleasant or disruptive or any other judgment that might come from the outside has no bearing or relevance on your soul connection to this child. Be in a place of unconditionalness and ask each time one of those types of experiences arise, what is the best way I can move towards love with this current display? Each time is an opportunity to open your heart deeper and further. Sometimes the difficult child comes to us specifically for that need. You are very blessed in this relationship. This one has served you already quite well and will continue to serve you through the remainder of this life equally. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So thank you for that opportunity to share that soul reading for you, Kristen. And I invite you, if any of that resonated with you, to share. I appreciate the opportunity to offer this soul reading. So I will continue. I see a few comments. Uh, thank you, Dove, for joining. Monica. Greatest gratitude, dearest Master Paul. The request was for opening our hearts further, and I felt a subtle energy on my hair and soul still happening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's, uh, it's amazing, actually, the first time I felt physical-based energy was exactly the same thing. I, felt, I was in a room, and it was a, it was a non-air-conditioned room. It was a quiet room. Uh, basically a still room and I felt like I had a fan right above my head. My, my hair felt like it was moving and, and there was like a little tingling on top of my scalp and I was like wow this is, uh, this is quite an unusual experience. And so I'm um, really, really, uh, that was the first validation for me 
that uh, energy healing really works. And that was, gosh, about 12, 15 years ago. So things have changed quite a bit since then. Uh, one of the uh, incredible experiences I had, I mentioned this painting behind me, was from working with a master, a uh, female master, named Qin Yin, Q-I-N-Y-I-N. A beautiful soul. If you, if you have any uh, desire to, to find out what she's about, definitely find her. And um, when I went to one of her three-day intensive retreats, she did what was called a, uh, a 10,000 water crown chakra blessing. And keep in mind, I was at my infancy of my spiritual journey at that time. Uh, I had just completed about three years with the Don Yoga system, becoming a master in their system. And that involved me doing a lot of physical-based postures. You know, you put your arms out in front of you and you bend your knees and you hold that for 12 hours, 5 hours, however long it was. Your body shaking. What it does is it clears your, your, your physical body. It was based on some of the wisdom that that master had learned. So this is where I started opening up my, my physical energy body. Uh, but when I met this master, I hadn't really connected spiritually on the levels that I had wanted to. And so in that room with those same eight people I was mentioning earlier, she, um, she uh, put on a, a special music and then said, okay, close your eyes. And then she said, okay, crown chakra blessing commence. This was the 10,000 waters crown chakra blessing. I tell you, it was one of the most extraordinary experiences of my life. It was, um, I sat in a chair, my back was straight, and if somebody took 10,000 needles, poked them through like a piece of cardboard, and they were all forced, pointed downwards, it's like somebody put that right on top of my head and then poked my head. It felt like 10,000 needles on top of my head all at once with fire. It was to the point where I was ready to say ouch and yell and say stop. And it went on for about 30 to 45 seconds. It was unquestionably one of the most validating experiences I've had of heaven, divine down source, and um, the soul world and us being very connected. It was an amazing experience. And from that day, I've never had an issue feeling heaven, feeling crown chakra, feeling blessings. No question about it. I hope that someday you'll have experiences like that too. And one thing that is offered through my services through other worldwide representatives is called Crown Chakra Blessings. You may or may not feel that kind of an experience, but you'll absolutely have huge uh, blessings. So, I don't know how I got off on that sidetrack, but um, it's always good information to have those little tidbits of knowledge, huh? Cat Cat, greetings Master Paul. Ask for financial blessings on uncertain where to focus, focused on the message center. Actually, good guidance, Cat Cat. The message center and the first soul house at the base of the torso, uh, just inside your body, in between your, your, um, your anus and your genitals, is an acupuncture spot. And inside is a fist-sized energy center, energetic center, it's, you can't see it. Um, and that is called your first soul house. That and your fourth soul house are both related to your finances and financial blockages. And so, um, actually, I think I'll do a soul reading as to why. Um, Master Shah talks about it a bit in his books, but uh, let's see if we can find any deeper reason. This is one of the great values of having open spiritual channels. You just ask heaven, they give you some answers. So. Let's do that. Let's find out why those soul houses are relevant to our finances. And I'll ask for what practices we can do to uh, clear some of those blockages. Shall we? I think most of us on the line can use some financial benefits, right? Okay, so let's find out. To the soul of all finances and how they sit on the human body in the first and the fourth soul house. The reasons why they are in the first and the fourth soul house, the associations of why those energies resonate in those two soul houses, why and how they can be boosted, transformed, and released if there are blockages, boosted, transformed, and gained if we are to gain financial blessings. Could you please come forth at this time, borrow my mouth, share your wisdom and insights as to how we can best learn from your wisdom and how we can best 
clear the Shen Qi Jing blockages and grow our finances. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How? This is the soul of the fourth soul house. I am not anyone's individual soul house. I am a representative in general of that logos, of that hierarchical term. I represent connection to heaven, to earth. I am the portal by which heaven communicates to all souls. I am the center by which virtue transmits from heaven to the physical plane known as earth. I am the center through which all love, emotions, finances, karma, all communication with heaven and earth, and all other emotional imbalances are connected. As a portal, as a tunnel through which heaven's communication, heaven's transference of wisdom, information, virtue, and more flows. I have to inform you that my shape, my fluidity can be dramatically impacted by, of course, karma, by emotions that separate, by lack, thinking, by greed, by karma associated with harming others in those areas, by mindsets attitudes and beliefs by a lack of self-love and a lack of compassion and of course by a lack of virtue in your records in heaven there are many on this path that have received blessings for financial gain and with that come stipulations to serve, to open your heart, to break free of the blockages. Why? Because, as indicated, I am a tunnel that is fluid, that shrinks, that grows. What is the key to keeping my tunnel open, your tunnel open? What is the key to opening the portal from heaven to you? It is trust. It is alignment to source. It is in every moment, are you in gratitude? In every moment, are you in service? In every moment, are you changing the thoughts that are not serving you? In every moment, are you singing to serve others? In every moment, are you releasing karmic debt? In every moment, are you asking for forgiveness? It is such a simple teaching. But most of us refuse to hear it. Or, as mentioned earlier by this one, we get caught up in the drama of life and we fail to keep in check with all those things that keep me open. I am always here to serve unconditionally. Heaven, in most cases, has enough virtue if you are doing what is asked, if you are serving, if you are doing forgiveness to keep me open. This is the relationship between me 
and finances. I am honored to share this deeper wisdom. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's see if there's any information from the first soul house. How? I am the first soul house. I am known as Hui Yin. Why am I relevant to finances? I am the base. I am the engine. I am the foundation. I am the beginning of your energy channel. I am the connection to Mother Earth. I am I too have a portal. I too have restrictions in my opening. They are caused in most cases by ancestral karma and by your base non selfless thinking. All kinds of desires, all kinds of dogma, all kinds of restrictive thinking, all kinds of I am right, you are wrong, all kinds of separative mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs ground you in the wrong way. You think they bring you strength, but in fact they tighten my service. How do you reverse them? by paying attention to what the heart center told you. The heart center is the connection in the middle of the hourglass. Open it and I will naturally transform. Boost me once the heart center is open. Together the finances release. I am the representative of Mother Nature and her feminine qualities are important to have balance in the financial yin-yang world. This is one aspect of my service to you. I hope this wisdom assists you in understanding how blockages in my soul house can impact you. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Whew. I'm a bit warm, so there must be a lot of information coming through. So hopefully that was uh, enlightening for you. It was for me. I always love asking questions like that when we check in with heaven. Um, I love checking in with the souls of objects, things, things that are intangible, like a fourth soul house, first soul house. It's one of my favorite things to do. The amount of wisdom insights that come are just extraordinary. I'm always amazed by, um, by what they have to share. And, and this is just the beginning. You know, if this video is watched probably for the next year, people, a lot of people are going to laugh about that. They're going to say, this guy is smoking something. But I don't really care. I know that the soul light era and the soul communication is the future. I know that 10 years from now, it'll be mainstream and understood, natural. Just like mind over matter when people thought, you know, what you think is what you become. Trust me, they got laughed at when that first started. But um, that's where we're at now with soul. Everything has a soul and it can share its wisdom with you. So there's a good example for you. Hopefully you'll open your mind enough for appreciating that. I know all those watching are. I'm speaking to all those that will watch us in the future. Uh, so Kristen has responded. Let's see. Okay. Uh, thank you, dearest Master Paul. Heaven, Master Shah, soul of our relationships. Tears are flowing as I resonate so deeply with what you have spoken. As today we had one of our emotional spikes. And, okay, I had to open it up to see the rest of it. And resistances keep reoccurring in spite of my deepest and greatest unconditional love for him. Tears are following. I can barely see what I am typing. During the blessing, I requested blessings for our relationship, and I was immediately filled with such peace and calm. Dog on in. Thank you. Dearest Master Paul, Heaven, Master Shah Dao Source, and all our relationships, tears are flowing. Okay, so I think we just saw that. Good. Yeah, we saw it three times. Thank you so much uh, for that sharing. Such a beautiful sharing. 
you too have a, a, a really deep relationship, which is why it's so up and down. So um, do a lot of forgiveness um, specific to the parts of the relationship that we're not honoring of each other. Because the message I'm getting is there was, there was too much self-righteousness. Um, so really avoid self-righteousness in this life especially. Um, honor wherever your child is at. Validate wherever they're at. Let them go through um, their... Uh, let, them, let them have the experience. You know, sometimes they just need to get the finger burnt. Uh, you know, watch over to make sure that, that nothing detrimental will happen, of course. But sometimes that form of love has a much greater uh, appreciation. You, you respond, you say, this is what I think is the wisest choice, but I'm going to honor you, whatever you want to do. And they're probably going to choose self-righteousness, and then they will learn. And then you don't say, I told you so. You say, I love you anyway. I will continue to offer my guidance, wisdom, and insights. You can choose to listen, or you can choose your own path. But I hope that you realize every time I offer anything to you, it's what I hope is for your best. And then with time, they'll start to give whatever you say more, more merit, more appreciation. Okay. Uh, Monica responded. Uh, we truly appreciate you, Master Paul. Thank you, countless balance to Master Shah. I'm honored for the opportunity to be a conduit of this, of this uh, sharing this wisdom. And uh, it brings so much light to us. And Cat Cat, wonderful. Thank you, Master Paul. So, yeah, it's been, it's been actually very, very um, entertaining and fun for me. Uh, on a live show, I never know where we're going to head. I just uh, connect with heaven, start, uh, start the show, ask you guys to also jump in there and share whatever uh, you'd like to share. And uh, it tends to make for a very nice and enjoyable show. So we're very close to the end of the hour here. I'm going to um, ask one additional favor of all of you, which is to share this video and let other people know your experience. Um, one nice thing about Facebook is uh, it will go to wherever it's supposed to. I just trust divine guidance. After this, I will do soul conferencing to all the souls of Facebook to pay attention to any of the shares that you do, any of the shares that I do. And it will somehow land in the right box. And someone will click on it and get the right wisdom and service and value out of it. And then heaven will open up your record and they will sprinkle flowers on it. And I will open up my book and I'll take flowers out of my book and I'll sprinkle them in yours for sharing and helping me to grow this wisdom. Because the purpose of life is to serve and that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, serving Dr. Master Shah. So I encourage you to make sure, if you're not familiar with Master Shah, become more familiar. Um, go to his website, drsha.com. My information is somewhere on this page above you, beside you. Uh, there's somewhere on this, I'm told, where you can click follow. Look for that button. I don't see it on mine, but if you see a follow button, click on it. And that should give you an opportunity to know when I go live at any points in the future. And should you have the right timing, you can join me live. So that's uh, one additional way to be aware and abreast of, of how I can best serve you. So I'm going to connect and say thank you and then offer you my deepest gratitude and one final blessing as we leave. So I wish to thank Divine Tao and Source, my beloved spiritual father, Master Shah. I thank all the souls that have come to this uh, opportunity to serve you here today in this live stream. I thank all of the holy beings, guides, angels, and saints, and my healing treasures for the blessings that you've offered and for your offering of this final blessing to all those that have joined me to this point. This final blessing is for your soul journey to assist you to move to whatever the next level is on your soul journey so that you can level up as appropriate in all cases. Close your eyes, place your hand over your heart center, your message center, be fully open to receive. Blessing begin. Silent blessing.
Oh, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So I wish to thank all of you for joining me here today. I will be here tomorrow, same time, 2 o'clock uh, Hawaii time, 5 o'clock California time, Pacific time. And it would be, um, I believe, 6 o'clock Mountain, 8 o'clock Eastern, and uh, Australian time. I still haven't seen any Aussies show up. Master Robin showed up, and that's about 10 a.m. their time. So please share this, share it with your friends, tell other people about it. The more we serve, the greater the benefits to our Virtue Bank, which will increase our finances. Until then, love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.